Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly. I'm your host, Niall. If you could head over to the upper tier on YouTube, smash that subscribe and bell notification button and drop a like on the video. We're coming to you a day early this week for Pro Wrestling Weekly. Hope you all got the notifications on YouTube and that you can join us tonight. Um, we've got a tidy little show tonight, a few bits to get through, stuff to talk about, some interesting stuff. Um, and also, we got to reflect back on our usual batch of history. we got a ton of notable birthdays to get through this week. This is a big week. But of course, we remember, sadly, this week, back in 2020, we lost the late, great announcer, Howard the Fink, Finkel. So we'll be covering him in our history tonight as well. Along with some interesting birthdays in there. Quite the mix for all you guys in there at the moment. But again, as I said, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification button. Drop a like in the video. Some disappointing stuff in wrestling this week. And some good stuff. And we'll go through it all. Eno's in there. What's the crack? All good, Eno. Hope you're good. Uh, how about those new World Tag Team title belts? We're going to be talking about them. We're going to be talking about Rhea Ripley. We're going to be talking about Gunter. We're going to be talking about so much stuff tonight. Plenty to get through. We're also going to be having a look at that Dynasty card. It looks a tasty card, that AEW Dynasty card coming to you this weekend. Um, we'll have to filter through the footage from CM Punk, um, which was all a big baloo about nothing really, wasn't it, when you think about it. And we'll talk also about, bruv, Will Ospreay having a pop back at the game Triple H. We'll talk about that as well. Acers is in. Motor City Machine Gun signing with AEW. Yet yeah, not unexpected. TNA Rebellion pay-per-view on Saturday night. I haven't even looked at that, Acers. There you go. I haven't even looked at it. So if you know what, drop it in the chat. Howdy, Noel. How's things? Big up, Sean. How are you, my friend? AEW Dynasty this Sunday. Yeah, looking forward to that. UFC 300 was tremendous. It was. It was indeed. Uh, Steven's in. Big up, Steve. What's the difference between the belt Bailey has and the belt Ripley has? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, I'm not too sure. I haven't. Looked. I presume it's just the um. There's, there's a slight shape variation, isn't there, as well? And it's just one is, I presume, is one a world champion and one's an undisputed champion or something like that. I'm not too sure. There you go. Good question, though. Good question. Right. So where will we begin? Where do I want to begin on this? We're also going to be talking as well. Uh, I echo Acers that Max Holloway KO might be my favourite ever. Yeah, two boys out into the middle of the octagon. Let's do it. And he absolutely clipped him with that right hand, didn't he? And put him to sleep. Yeah, he's a tough cookie as well, isn't he? He's a tough cookie. Eric saying, big up Eric. What's a crack? No, the new tag belts look awesome. They do look awesome, don't they? They look really awesome. And I tell you, they actually look like a proper trophy piece, not like a kind of, you know, the way the replica belts with the coloured straps and stuff like that. They look a bit kind of toyish. This look, these look like a proper prize, don't they? I presume we'll get different ones as well on Friday night as well. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Let's see what they look like as well. Should be super cool. Uh, new SmackDown tag titles this Friday. Yeah, I was just saying that their eyes are spot on. Uh, wasn't expecting Gable turning heel. Neither was I, but I tell you one thing, it made my night. I had a really good Raw last night on the back of some disappointment there with obviously Rhea Ripley having to vacate the belt. We've talked about that and stuff like that. But um, Seamus coming back, down a number on Ivar. I really like that. Seamus looking a bit swole, as they say, you know. Looks the part. And um, then Gable doing that was just tremendous. I loved every minute of it. No doubt, Romy one can all be a begin to give me socks over Zami's hand. But I told you, I told you. Very, very cool. That video for the JW all in was just a load of bollocks. Yeah, absolutely, wasn't it? It was a big load of... You, you kind of wonder, like, the lack of strength in AEW in that gorilla position that day. That could have been dampened down and sorted real, real quick and never escalated. It was absolutely crazy that something like that... Imagine when you look back on the history of AEW in a number of years' time and stuff like that, and you talk about, you know, these Rise and Fall documentaries that they do and stuff like that, and you look back and you think, that's the issue right there. You know, Cody left the building, Jay Cargill has left the building, and Punk left the building, but Punk left the building over that. You lost 
one of the biggest commodities in wrestling in terms of draw value, in terms of merch, in terms of everything. And you lost them to that. You let that be the reason. It's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy when you think about it. Madness, surely. Um, I'm going to check something here for a lot. Just give me two seconds. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Um, there we go. Right. Thank you for your more comments, first of all. Praying that Raw do a women's tournament for Women's World Championship at Backlash. I don't think they are. Did they not announce that they're going to... Um, it's next week on Raw, as far as I know. I've seen some announcement, unless I'm wrong. Uh, I would love to see Sheamus versus Paul at Backlash for the United States title. I really want Sheamus to be a champion top lad. I'd love to see Sheamus versus Gunther. I was hoping to get Sheamus versus Gunther for the IC belt. It was nice to have the lobster head team back. Yeah, it was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's the crack? No, a big up, Daz. Hope you're good, my friend. And Tony Khan trying to get the upper hand with that piece of video footage. No, he wasn't. And apparently I read reports that a lot of roster members didn't want it aired. The books actually didn't want to go through with it, I heard. I heard Shivani didn't want that to do with it. And I, I, I just don't know what the thinking was behind it in terms of AEW, how they felt it was going to land and stuff like that. Because basically what it was is it more or less showed us everything that Punk said. I think Punk handed it up a little bit more than what it was. Um, But yeah, really, really, really... Uh, didn't shed a good light really at all. Um, and and hence the reason we asked the question, like who's who's advising who here and why are they um why are they airing it? But there's talk that they might be in a little bit of trouble as well because that security footage it's protected in the UK under laws under that GDPR um, you know, the personal stuff. Um and there might be an issue there, so I'm not too sure. So we'll we'll see what happens. Um, Matt Riddle versus Zack Cyber Jr. for New Japan TV Championship. Um, Noel, were you at the game on Sunday? Stephen, I was. I was at the game. Myself and Darren were both at the game with my son Ben and his uh, nephew Christian. Uh, all round, we had a good weekend, but the match was really, really disappointing. Really disappointing. Uh, Shauna Duffy, how are you? How are you, bro? I am good. Hope you are doing well. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Eric, some very interesting QR codes last night as well. There was, there was. This Uncle Howdy stuff is taking momentum, isn't it? There he is, my man. Roll me one Kenobi. Hey, all. How are you, roll me one Kenobi? Did you enjoy Gable last night? Did you enjoy Gable? <laughs> Will Seth be on the tour? I don't know. There's, there's an awful lot of talk about Seth at the moment and Becky, isn't there? Um, talking about taking a bit of time off. Obviously, Seth. I'd imagine Seth's carrying a number of knocks and stuff like that that he needs sorting out. And we know Becky is due to take some time off. Now, does that change with the Ripley situation? I don't know. Are they going to go a different direction? Would it be Nia Jax, Liv Morgan? What way are they going to go with it? I'm not too sure. Maybe they'll convince Becky to stay on to pad out those months, maybe till Ripley's back. Does talk somewhere in the region of, what, three, four, six months or something like that? Um. I know they coasted into Mania with Seth, and a lot of people were saying that they kept the championship on him. But I think with the women's championship, I think it's um it's slightly different. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was sad to see it happen. But we will talk about it. Um, definitely. Uh, let's get into the comments. Romy one Kenobi A Z M versus Stephanie Vector at Windy City was so unreal. I'll have to check that out. I haven't had a chance. I'll definitely check it out and come back to it. If not the upper hand, then it's attention. Absolutely. Kenny's in. Big up Kenny. The video was pathetic. The comments from Osprey was pathetic. Everything they're doing is pathetic and reeks of desperation. We are going to have a look at the Dynasty card. Because um, I think the Dynasty card, if they don't interfere with it, and they don't put any kind of stupid shenanigans into it, and they just let the card take its course, I think it has the potential to be a really, really good card. And that's me kind of parking the silliness of the, the Punk Perry footage the silliness of the Will Ospreay um, rebuttal to Triple H. Um, you could see even um, Moxley's missus was like, she wasn't into it at all. Sure, she wasn't. Um, but if you look at the Dynasty card, and we will take a look at it, um, it could be well worth a watch. John Moxley, new IWGP heavyweight champion. Yeah, we kind of knew that was going to be the way that was going to go. Have you any new stuff in the shop this week? No, Shawnee, I am waiting on a ton of stuff to come in. 
I'm still even waiting on three or four orders that were supposed to be in for WrestleMania. That's how bad they get. Um, but keep an eye on the Instagram page after that comes in. We're waiting on. We've got Heyman Hall of Fame shirts coming in. We've got the Cody Comic Slap one coming in. We've got the, the Reigns, the Family Above ones due in. We've got the Rock the People's Champ one is coming in. There's a bunch of stuff coming in and loads of other stuff on the way as well. So just keep an eye. Keep an eye out for it. Or if you're looking for anything in particular, just hit me up and we can add it to an order. Eric, Tony Schiavone, probably the had flashback to Bash the Beach. He did. He did indeed, didn't he? Yeah. Right now, they're making Mick Foley world champion on the other channel. Thanks very much, Tony. Give us the heads up. Jack Perry is looking unreal. He had Chicago in the palm of his hands. He's doing very well out of it, isn't he, in fairness? And I, I believe they released the shirt there the other day on um, either Shop AEW or Pro Wrestling Tees and it sold out straight away. So good to see someone's getting a kicker out of it. Damien Priest face turn last night and leaving Judgment Day. Yeah, hints, hints, just just a trickle. Just a trickle. And you know something? I was I was delighted to see um they showed some footage there from when he won the belt and he went backstage into the gorilla position and how happy everyone was for him. And I, I seen a little um I seen a little clip today as well of a kind of a his pathway to the belt and stuff like that and how he's developed and all and it's a uh, it's awesome to see how much he's even changed. You can see his changes physically, not unlike Gunter, um, but very, very impressive to see and how happy everyone was for him to get the belt and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, the, the moments there with Triple H. We also seen the Cody one as well when he was being handed the watch and all. That was super cool. That, that Now, I told you last weekend, WrestleMania didn't bring a tear to my eye in that situation, but I had a bit of a tear to my eye when he broke out the dad's watch and stuff like that. And that was him. Um, you could see how blown away he was by it as well. The absolute effort that those boys made. So incredible, incredible. You can only be happy for it. Sean, Tony made out the incident to be a massacre. In reality, it was a secondary skill scuffle. Do you know what it was, Sean? I did when I did look at kind of the end bit of it, you know, when he went in across the monitors, he was definitely giving it large to Tony Khan. Now, large to the point where you'd be in fear of your life. Um, you mustn't have had too many life experiences that that made you in fear of your life, but how and ever. Um, that video can be a blessing in disguise, especially for my guy Jack Perry. I tell you, there's more than one way in the crowd and just looking really good. It's mad to think, isn't it, that like uh, the, the, the CM Punk on boat shows is the highest rated thing, and it's it, it's the the CM Punk effect is having the merch effect on Jack Perry. It's class. Definitely gonna pop up when I'm paid. Yeah, not a bother at all, pal. Absolutely. I'll keep you posted anyway. Uh, final boss Funko Papa sold out is, but this kid here got one order. Looks class. There'll be plenty of them available. They always say that anyway. Romy One Kenobi, Noel, do you have any AZM shirts? I don't. I don't, but it could be a way to go. The Goat Rose <laughs> announced the new his new promotion. I'm excited. He got Utami on his roster. That is a big, big deal. I'll have to look at more. Virgo bring Paul Tracy in as a replacement. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, not that Paul couldn't do it, but I don't think so. Uh, Punk picked up that guillotine from training with two roofs. <laughs> he did, yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether I don't know whether Duke Rufus would be uh, uh, would, would be happy with that front face lock. I think he'd be expecting a little bit more. Uh, Guelia can't wait to see her tear through that NXT women's roster. Absolutely. Acers, 1-0 to Barcelona. Great start for them. And Sean, they're both in the wrong, but Punk was provoked. True, true. No disagreeing on that. Right, so let's start. Let's talk with Gunter. Gunter has been in WWE 915, sorry, 1915 days now and has been champion for 1536 of those days, holding the IC belt for 666 days and the NXT UK belt for 870 days. That's incredible. And I would dare say, I don't think anyone has had a start in the company that matches that. That was incredible. And look at that picture, folks. I purposely used that picture. How much has this man evolved since that time? So fair play to Gunter. Absolutely. Um, it was meant to embarrass Punk, but he ended up trending on Twitter. He trended number one on Twitter in the US while it was being shown and all. Did you see that? And everybody realised he was AJ. <laughs> Who do you think would face Cody now, AJ or LA Knight? AJ. AJ. 
I'd like to see a few with, with Cody and AJ. I'm not too sure. They could go LA Knight as well. But, uh, probably AJ, I'd say. Uh, well, considering how he was in UFC, a front base lock from him is like a flying, a flying triangle from Brian Ortega. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Gunther is a machine. He reminds me so much of him. Anahashi, yeah, absolutely. He, he's just... Looking forward to watching NXT tonight. Orders of Pain winning NXT tag titles and Trick Williams defeating Carmelo Hayes in the steel cage match. AJ is confirmed. There you go. That's what you want, isn't it? Just saw I'd put that out there for Gunter. Um, let's give props to Rhea here. This was a difficult moment, wasn't it? Real difficult moment. <laughs> I want Gallus to be trapped at the Raw Smackdown there unreal. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But what did we make of this? Ray Ripley forced to relinquish the Women's World Championship due to injury. The doctors have told her to keep her sidelined for a number of months. She was injured during the backstage pack of course from Liv Morgan on the Raw after WrestleMania 40. Very, very disappointing. But I mean, what falls out of this is now, where are they going to go with it? Where do you think they're going to go with it? That is the question. The question is, now, where is it going to go? And where do you think it should go? Um number of options um i suppose they could go potentially nia jacks they could potentially go you you would assume prior to her coming back it would be on live morgan and that would kind of close that circle out basically because the injury um i'm not i'm not um against live morgan getting the belt i'm actually from the chamber on i've been very impressed with live morgan and the work that she has done but uh yeah very very disappointing from that Rhea has to, after her title reign and after the run that she has had, that this is how it kind of ends with, it, with an injury and having to relinquish the belt. Um, and you could see it in her last night. Everything was kind of dampened down. Everything was a bit more surreal when you think of the journey she's brought us on for the last year or whatever it is at this stage. Longer than a year, no doubt. Um, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the chat. Where do you think it's going to go? Where do you think what's going to fall out of it and stuff like that? Sean, very sad. Um, good rain, but thank God I don't have to hear that cringy mammy chant for a while. Uh, thank you, Liv. <laughs> thank you, Liv. Rhea Ripley picked up injury during Becky match and written off TV last Monday night. There you go. Absolutely. That's the, that's the, the real stuff, as they say. So, in thinking with that, what falls out of this now? As we know, Becky released the book. I was reading some of it yesterday. Uh, one of our customers, Leanne, came in, had the book, so I was reading a little bit through it and stuff like that. Very interesting. Very, very detailed. Very, very detailed. Um, but according to a report from PW Insider, the company is making it a point to ensure that Lynch's deal is also completed before it expires. I think there's something like, is there two weeks or something or two months or something to go on or something like that? Eight weeks left in our current deal, but we have not been able to 100% confirm the accuracy of that claim. But apparently there's about whatever it was, eight weeks. I know they were talking about it going into mania as well. The talk is she wanted to take some time off to, you know, get and do some family stuff with the, the baby and all that kind of stuff and all. And probably Seth taking a bit of time off as well. He's had a serious workload of a year as well. So the question is, does that change things now with Rhea going out injured? Would they go the Becky route and convince Becky to hang around for another three or four months before she takes that hiatus and uh, smooth it out with maybe a slightly improved contract as well from the offering that might be there already? Let us know your thoughts on that. How would you feel about Becky taking on the strap and running with it? Um, interesting. But let me know your thoughts on it. Easy. I was watching Robocop the TV series last night and I've only just noticed that Joker Bray looks a little bit like Robocop. There we go. Steve's in. That Chris Cole fella was mad. Insane, Steve. And I did a review of it. Absolutely insane. One of the more difficult reviews I had to do because I just, just you know, <laughs> the rest of it felt like such a byproduct of it, really. Uh, Romy One Kenobi. Becky is up there with Tom Nakano. As one of the best women's wrestlers. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Give Alexa the belt in Columbus, Ohio. Not a bad shout. Not a bad shout at all. Charlotte Flair is due back for SummerSlam. 
probably can't leave if they can stop the rent of the time but they'll have to travel to someone and maybe Charlotte. Hey, here's a thought. Why don't they put it on Becky and go Becky Charlotte for SummerSlam? Yeah, now we're talking. That's the gravy, isn't it? He's nothing like Robocop by <laughs> Becky posted on X, but the internet said I was taking time off. See you soon, Europe. With Rhea out, sex will be crucial to have around. Yeah, I think so. so I think so. Um, but let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't want to go on there. What, what else we got? We have to talk about this. How are we feeling about the bloodline? What way do we think that's going to go? Bloodline 2.0, 3.0, bloodline heels bloodline faces what way is this all gonna fall roman comes back face team do we get the usos back together do we get the kind of original bloodline Um, do we get sammy back in there feeling oozy again what way does that go uh jacob fatu i see Romy one can all be in there jacob fatu coming in as well uh, the new tag belts look dope. They do. They look insane. Insane. Absolutely. We'll have a look at them now in a few minutes. I do have a slide now. Absolutely. Jacob Fatu. I've seen clips from this Jacob Fatu, guys. My God. My God. Um, <laughs> was everyone a little bit unflattered with Tamatonga? Or was everyone okay with it? Because um, I was I was looking at this Jacob Fatu stuff. That guy is insane for his size. Insane. This is rock bloodline. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, hundred um, percent. So when I was thinking about it today, and I was breaking down the bloodline, and you would go where, and you'd have your face and your heels and all that kind of stuff that leads into maybe another two years of bloodline storylines, probably. Um, I was thinking, what about if we went to, into Survivor Series in November? Traditional real Survivor Series match. And we had the Bloodline face team versus the Bloodline heel team. That would be absolutely rocking. Rowan pulled out of Nindy Day. He's coming home to WWE. How do you see that? I read that. Um, and you know something? Delighted to have him back. Because it's been really rough for him. Obviously losing Bray and also losing... Uh, it was Brody as well, would have been very, very tough on him. So it'd be good to have him back in there and stuff like that. Um still on the Uncle Howdy stuff and all that, that kind of, you know, Wyatt Family 2.0 or 3.0, whatever you want to call it. I'm still a little bit out on it. I'm still not sure. Um I hope they knock it out of the park. Still trying to figure out in the current climate with what they're doing and what they're presenting and how they're building stuff, where it kind of fits in. Um, and how it's going to be taken and accepted, um, and how will people feel about it? We know it will probably struggle to hit the creative juices of say Bray Wyatt, um, but we'll see. We'll see what it is. We'll see what it is. It'll be interesting. Um, Kenny Bloodline story still has life in it. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Roman face when he's back. I'd say I'm, I'm all for it. Wasn't it amazing on SmackDown the other night? I was only thinking about this today as well. That like within that short segment, when you think of Solo, Solo has been irrelevant literally since the Cena match at Crown Jewel or whatever it was. And all of a sudden within that short segment, he's so relevant again. He, he's the, 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 the stand-in tribal chief, if you like, and the, that moment where Heyman went to make the call and he took the phone off him and jumped all over it and the way they attacked Jimmy and everything and all, that was super cool. And it just goes to show you, doesn't it, that like in the blink of an eye when things are not necessarily going the way you think, simple little things like that can propel you back in there again into such importance. Um, Roman face when he's back, I'd say, and I'm all for it, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tamatanga, New Japan, unreal, but he never got a big pop when he arrived on SmackDown. Yeah, no, I just think, I, I suppose when they think about the bloodline, they think about the big dudes and stuff like that and all, you know, and I was just thinking, like, even if you look at that picture there, you know, he's going to <laughs> look at Heyman and look at Tamatanga and look at Solo in the middle. Just different, you know, different, different feel about it. 
But Magus' son is more bigger than Jacob Fat too. He is absolutely, absolutely. Um, is Paul Heyman a face now or what? Um, I don't know. I wonder are they gonna. I wonder are they gonna crowbar him in the middle? I think is he gonna be the go between between the two? You know, could could Solo like hold him for ransom or something like that? Or? The other side might want them. Or I wonder what way the rock would do it, you know, if the rock comes in, you know, and the wise man and all that stuff. My heart he posted the teaser, maybe join. Um interesting. Uh only saying, bro, then again, it was probably the tablets I'm on. You know, it's only one man's opinion. There you go. There you go. Bloodline Civil War will be better than Avengers Civil War. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think if you get bloodline versus bloodline then you roll it along and you know you're going to get a load of attacks backstage, you know, when Roman and The Rock come back and they bring in Jake Fatu and stuff like that and all, it's going to be electric. Where's Jeff Hardy? God knows. I have no idea. Um, no idea. No idea. This is NXT black and gold storytelling. It is. It is. Uh, at Daz Reynolds, still under contract with AEW. There you go. There you go. But yeah, we have to be excited about this bloodline stuff, don't we? It's it's um the way it's developing, it's a uh, really, really, really cool at the moment. Um and I just I was just blown away by the way they can just pull that trigger so easy. Um where do we want to go? Let's go here. This is your recap. We've probably gone through raw at the moment already, but Seamus beat Ivar. Uh number one contenders, DIY picking up the win. So happy for those two boys. Love Gargano and Champa. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, uh, Candice LeRae and Hardwell uh, picking up the win in the tag match. Uh, Andrade versus Dominic with JD McDonough, winner Andrade. Um, Nevin, uh, Nevin and Green picking up the win in the other tag match. Finn Balor versus Jay Uso, winner Jay Uso. And then the Intercontinental Championship, Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable, winner Sami Zayn retains. Chad Gable going heel and delivering the beatdown. The beatdown. Um, when Jay and Jimmy get back together, the crowd will go nuts. I'm here for the huge pop. Yeah, absolutely. Keep on saying it. Together, so much better than apart. Question is, who does Paul Heyman in, in line himself with? I think he's going to be like a kind of a go-between kind of thing. I don't think he's going to line himself with anyone for his own advantage. Jeff is doing gigs as far as I know. I don't know if you've ever attended one of those gigs. Weird. Uh, Shame is back with his old team. I love the, yeah, absolutely. Great to have him back. Get rid of the rebel. <laughs> that Canadian destroyer by Dom on Andrade was quality. It was quality, wasn't it? Very, very good. Uh, Kenny was gas. Triple H trying to hold it together with Truth going completely off. Tangent on Raw. Yeah, it's just mad. Isn't it? I think he does it now, isn't it? It's kind of like what uh, it's like what Sammy was doing with the bloodline initially, wasn't he? Trying to get them to break character and stuff like that. No, Truth's just mad altogether. Cable, you're a C. Cable, you're a C. You next Tuesday. <laughs> you weren't happy, no? You weren't happy? I was actually I was actually watching it and um, Robbie and Kenobi and I was thinking of you. I knew your reaction tonight on the show would be that I loved every second of it. Just saying. They're red raw useless. <laughs> oh all of their songs are the wrestlers saying their names and then the worst instrumental you've ever heard in your life. Chad Gable calling Sammy saying that a stoner hippie was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, absolutely. Gable, get in the bin, you punk. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Bit the news out of this as well. Um, as you know, I collect memorabilia and stuff like that. I would be a big collector of the Schomburger stuff, and so was Darren. So this news was a little bit sad to us today. <coughs> Go full screen on this because it deserves it. 
After over a decade, my time at WWE has come to a close. I'm grateful that I had the opportunity over this period of time to focus on making art, and I'm so lucky that doing so has brought so many wonderful people into my life. I've had the opportunity to learn from some of the smartest and most capable people in their fields that I've ever met. Real friendships, people that I truly love, have been the result of this experience and it brought you the person reading this into my life. How amazing is that? If you ever bought my art, if you ever came up to say hello at a show, if you ever just gave me a thumbs up on social media, thank you. Thank you for allowing my work into your life. This chapter has come to a close and the new one is about to begin and I'm genuinely excited about it. The work never stops. Rob Schaumburg. Absolutely brilliant. Some of the stuff he has. I, I have a couple of Sean Berger pieces that I really, really love. I have the full-size Ricky Steamboat signed and autographed and started. And I have the classic chalked up uh, Ric Flair one with the old NWA, the 10 pounds of gold belt on it. Um, also signed and started. Two beautiful pieces um, that I really cherish. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you get a chance... Pick up a bit of Schomburger stuff at the moment, you know, because, you know, that sounds like he's going off to do something different. And we wish him well in whatever he's doing. Um, an interesting move by WWE. There seems to be a number of things going on at the moment. So let's see what way that goes. Um, let's see. One team has to be rewritten by Def Rebel, Cody or Punk. Thank God no augmented reality no more. Yeah, yes, yes. That's a that's actually interesting. I didn't want to just skip over that. Some of it I like. Some of it I like, and I did mention it on last week's show. But I think they, I think they went from here all the way to here with it, and it definitely there was a bit too much. Um, I really hope Chad goes full heel, Kurt Angle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking today, Sean. When I seen that, when I seen the the replay of the clip as well, when he hit him with that German. That was very Kurt Angle, wasn't it? That snap German. Very much so. He should have whipped it. He should have whipped it, the, the, the thing down. Didn't he the single? I know. He was an amazing artist. He was. Absolutely an amazing artist. Uh, Romy won Kenobi. Niall Jack Perry is going to so uh, to be so over soon. I'm here for it. His scapegoat gimmick gives me Brian Pillman vibes. It does, doesn't it? It does. Why always me? Always the victim, eh? Barcelona down to 10 men. Interesting. That's going to be a long night for them to see that out there. Um, just one second. Right. Yeah, so very disappointed in Sean Berger exiting the building in terms of WWE. Very interesting to see what he's going to go and do. So we'll keep an eye on that and stuff like that. But uh, if you do get a chance to pick up a piece of Sean Berger and put it into your collection, you should definitely do it. The quality of the work is insane. Kenny, who's in here in the chat and all, he will he will lend credence to that because he does his artwork for the books and stuff like that. You've seen some of his unbelievable artwork as well. So he knows the attention to detail and the work that goes into some of these art pieces and stuff like that. So huge appreciation for it and stuff like that. Right. Shall we look at the dynam at the dynasty card? Hoping for Punk and Jack Perry at Bloodsport next year. <laughs> Jack Perry, cry me a river on the back of jacket. Priceless. It was priceless. It was class. Class. Right, what are we thinking on the card? Has anyone gone down through the Dynasty card? How do they feel about it? All that kind of stuff. Um, this card should be almost illegal. It should. It's very, very good, isn't it? Uh, and it's just phenomenal artwork. Yeah, it is. AZM gave Tony a great match. There we go. What are we looking for in this? What are we looking out for? What are we sleeping on? What's going to be cool? Osprey versus Brian Danielson. How are you feeling about that? Um, that's going to be a very interesting one, isn't it? Um, be interesting to see the kind of chemistry those two boys have. Will it match up or could it be a little bit clunky? Joe versus Swerve. It's going to be unreal. Osprey Danielson, I'm excited for, but I'm wondering will the styles, will both styles marry properly and stuff like that. The books versus FTR is going to be what you get. Um, not that we have, it's not the first time we've seen it. Okada versus Pack. Who's excited for that? Okada versus Pack. The bastards. 
Um, and then we have Tony Storm versus Thunder, Thunder Rosa. And then, but how are you feeling about Roddy? Roddy versus um, Kyle. How are you feeling about that one? Um, is that a sleeper one? Um, Okada versus Pac, yeah, Acers. Uh, Kenny, I'm a huge Thunder Rosa fan. I like that women's match a lot. Yeah, interesting contrasting styles as well. I like that as well. Um, and I, I'm not um, I'm not disliking either the other women's match as well. I think if you look on the face, or I think if you look at Julia Hart, I think she's um, her progress in the business has been unbelievable over the last year or so. Really, um, really has become really, really good as a performer. I'm sure the ladder match will be good, but I'm getting tired of the FTR books matches. Yeah, we've seen them a lot, haven't we? We've seen them a lot. Um, and 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 you know something, I like to just watch FTR wrestle. I don't need a slant on it. You don't need a slant on it at all. Um, Julia Hart, she's so good. She is. She's extremely talented. Uh, the trios tag and Young Bucks FTR for me. Yeah, that trios tag match could be really, really good, couldn't it? Um, House of Black versus Adam Copeland, uh, Eddie Kingston, and Briscoe. Um, so that's gonna be um, that's gonna be uh, Mark Briscoe. That's gonna be um, really, really good. I, I think that could be a really, really good match. Um, Motor City Machine Guns debut after Bucks win the titles. Come out for the challenge. But I'm, I have to say, I'm gonna be excited if the if the if the Machine Guns inject themselves in there. That's something to be excited about. I'm a big fan of the Motor City Machine Guns. Big big fan of them. Swerve has been unreal. Definitely WWE's loss. Yeah, absolutely. Um, who's never say never as well. And I seen was there something about Joe as well? They were I seen an article the other day about Samoa Joe and free agency and all this kind of stuff and all. Uh, could we see Joe heading back potentially? Um, books try too hard. They do. They do. They do indeed. Uh, Osprey versus Danielson and Tony Storm versus Thunder Rosa. Big up bonkers. Thanks for joining us as well. They're your picks, are they? Bonkers, how do you feel Osprey and Danielson is going to marry two very different styles? Um, how do you think that will go? That's the only concern I have in it. And I'm not a concern. It's I'm quite intrigued to see what kind of match both these boys put together. Um, it'll be interesting. Dortmund 1-0 up. Oh, very interesting in that athletic game. Um, Romy 1 Kenobi. AW need to push the righteous soon. Vince and Dutch are unreal. Don't disagree with that at all. Young <laughs> books. <laughs> Big up bonkers, mate. There you go. Osprey has to win. Yeah, I think he... Hmm. You would think so. You would definitely think so. Um, but I am going to be very interested to see how that match, how that match pans out. Osprey versus Danielson would be that unreal. It should be illegal. Interesting, interesting. I just hope, I just hope it marries together the way we want and stuff like that. Um, Okada versus Pack, um, that technical side of Okada and Pack just with that brutal kind of style and stuff like that. That's gonna, that's gonna marry up pretty well, isn't it? The brutality of Pack's style versus Okada's technical style as well, plus that little sprinkling of brutality as well. That could be a show stealer. Absolutely, show stealer. Um, but uh, I think Joe, Joe and Swerve, Joe and Swerve will be the one. Um, Tony Khan, please push A Z M soon. So, um, yeah. So, like I said on this one, I'm I'm excited for this one coming to you. I think it's Sunday, as far as I know, Sunday. Yeah, April twenty first. Um, but I just don't want any. Um, I'm happy if the Motor City Machine Guns rock up, but I just don't. I just want the car to be allowed. Take its place, and you know, maybe maybe putting out a card like this and delivering a real good show can just take away the narrative of the footage and the, you know, the the Osprey promo and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, let them get back doing what they do. Let them get back wrestling. That's what we want to see, isn't it? That's the card for tomorrow. Looks good. Uh, the, oh, the the dynamite go home. Haven't looked at that yet. Haven't looked at that yet. So Tampton win a train nail. Seen that interesting. So yeah, so that's your dynasty card, folks. Um certainly looking forward to it. Some interesting matchups. Um Jericho versus Hook tomorrow. 
the machine guns versus the books will be quality. Um, yeah. I think I'd nearly rather see the machine guns versus FTR. There you go, because I think the machine guns on the books was quite a similar style, um, which which may just become a bit of a cluster. I think maybe if we get a, a, a marrying of different styles there, that kind of old school way of FDR versus the machine guns might be pretty cool. And as that said, Jer Jericho versus Hook. Uh, we got Mercedes Monet stealing 11 CEO. 2-0 to Dortmund. Wow. Atleti in trouble, guys. Atleti in trouble. Yeah, that'll be music to uh, Romy One Kenobi's ears. Uh, bonkers. Might be the technical abilities kicking in submission style match. Yes. Yes, indeed. The Righteous versus Motor City. Damn, that's money. Now we're talking. Barcelona, PSG, one all. Right. Let's get in and talk a little bit of history. Right, and we go back, Sean, a little bit in here for you tonight, Paul, and in the notable birthdays as well for you ECW fans. So we start off, 1995 ECW Hostile City Showdown took place at the ECW Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. On the show, the Sandman defeated Shane Douglas when the ECW Heavyweight Championship after a woman turned on the champion mid-match. And of course, we know after that, Shane Douglas and exited the building and went off to, to do his thing, as they say. 2007, on an episode of Raw from Milan, Italy, the miracle in Milan took place when Santino Marella made his WWE uh, debut and immediately won the Intercontinental Championship. Remember him getting picked out of the crowd? <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. But what a pop. The miracle in Milan. There you go. 2020, long-time WWE ring announcer we spoke about at the top of the show, Hall of Famer, and one of the company's very first employees. Howard Finkel, the Fink, sadly passed away at the age of 70. What an announcer he was. What a loyal servant he was to the business as well and to WWE. Absolutely fantastic. Spoken about greatly. 1982 in St. Paul, Minnesota, Hulk Hogan defeated Nick Bockwinkle to win the AWA World Heavyweight title. Due to the fact that both wrestlers used foreign objects during the match, Bockwinkle was awarded the championship back by AWA president Stanley Blackburn a week later. And in 1985 in Tokyo, Japan, Bruiser Brody made his New Japan Pro Wrestling debut and fought Antonio Inoki to a double countdown draw. 1985, Bruiser Brody. 1980 at the WWF MSG show in New York, Ken Patera defeated Pat Patterson to become the second ever WWF Intercontinental Champion. Ken Patera Pat Patterson. We go through some chat, uh, comments and then we come back to some notable birdies. Bonkers, big up, Daz. Santina Morella is doing a great job at TNA with his producing. He is. He's a. Uh, I, I always have a lot of time. I was uh, I remember I was I was at Mania twenty five and he did the remember he did the the with the women's battle royal Santini Santina wasn't it or something like that. Crazy. Mustafa Ali on TNA has been amazing. He was amazing before he went there. A very one, one that we questioned at the time when we went through the release list. We were kind of um, surprised he was one that was going. Mercedes Monet not even wrestling until double or nothing. Easy money bonkers, isn't it? Easy, 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 easy money. Can't beat it. Right, let's take some notable birthdays and then you lovely people can enjoy the football or the second half or whatever it is. Notable birthdays with quite a list this week. There was a big list when I went down through the history of who to pick out and I left a few behind as well, but it was big. So we started off with Austin Aries, 1978. Uh, one half of the great uh, announced him, Mike Tanay, 1954. Paul London, 1980. Vicky Guerrero, 1968. One that I was always a fan of, 1937. George the Animal Steel. Uh, 1954, the hot rod himself, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Dave Lombardi, 1961, the Brooklyn Brawler. Kurt Hawkins, Brian Myers, 1985. Um, I've seen a video today of himself and uh, um, Matt uh, presenting the figure to uh, 
your man, what's his name, is it, uh, the, that number one fan, and he was blown away by it. it looked really, really cool. Uh, Jay Lethal, 1985. Ezekiel Jackson, 1978. Just for you, Sean, Axel Rotten, 1971. And we rounded out with the man who was on Dark Side of the Ring a few weeks ago, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, his birthday this week, 1958. That's our list of notable birthdays for this week. Um, Monet, I don't rate her at all. Yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's been an interesting start, to say the least. Austin Aries, what a waste of talent. All self-inflicted, yeah, absolutely. And really, really, really well-talented. I've seen him live on a couple of shows. I know I know the talk is that he can be quite difficult backstage and quite difficult with creative and all that kind of stuff, but I followed him for years as well in Ring of Honor and stuff like that. He was exceptional in TNA. But I seen him wrestling on the NXT show uh, down in the Tree Arena and he wrestled there, uh, No Way Jose. And it was absolutely comedic gold. Comedic gold. Really loved it. Heck of a wrestler. Um that's it folks. Pro Wrestling Weekly for another week. Coming to you a day early. Um, if anything breaks during the week or anything we need to jump on for, we will do it. Um, love what he did to Hemi. <laughs> um, but if anything breaks, we will jump on and we will address it. Look out for some shorts during the week as well. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Always appreciate all you OGs in the chat as always. If you can, like the video on the way out, share it, obviously subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification button. I will be back on Thursday with Darren for Thursday Tear Talk. We'll preview all the Premier League action and FA Cup action, I think, coming up this weekend. We'll reflect back on the European football. Looks like tonight's going to be a belter. Imagine tomorrow night. Um, and all the usual news, plus beat the bookie and everything else that we do. But for now, as Eno says, we are over and out. Thank you for joining in. As I know someone who has gone to USA, Noel. also I'm going to watch some wrestling on Saturday night. Nice. Let us know what the show is. Hit me up on Twitter, Daz. Let me know who's on the show. And stuff like that. Um, but until next time, folks, have a safe evening. Enjoy the football. Enjoy the wrestling. And we will talk to you again.